In Excel, the idea that one formula only returns results to one cell has long since gone. In fact, we can create entire reports from a single formula. And that's what we're looking at in this video. So if you're ready, let's get started. Here's the goal. We will start with a few parameters and then we can create all of this. And it's all done with one formula. Now it's unlikely that you need to create this exact report and this video isn't about this exact report. It's just an example. But if you can follow along and understand how the process fits together, you'll be able to apply it to your scenario. So now let's head over into Excel and start building this report. We are going to build this report from scratch, but before we start building our single formula, we need to look at the individual calculations. The report that we are building shows the repayment of a loan, but this could be any report. We have the loan amount in C3, the number of monthly repayments in C4, and the interest rate in C5. And we are going to start building our report in B8. I'll type equals, opening curly bracket to create an array. Our first column is going to be called period, and that is in double quotes. The second column will be opening. The third will be interest. The fourth will be payment. And the fifth will be closing. We can then close that curly bracket. And when we commit that, we get all of those headings in a single row. Now we know this will always be the first row of the report. So let's format this row accordingly. I will select all the columns. And then let's make these bold by pressing Control and B, and let's underline by pressing Alt H B O. So that's our header row. Now let's start with the individual calculations. We're going to start with a list of period numbers. So in cell B9, I'll type equals sequence opening bracket. Cell C4 contains the number of periods. So we can close that bracket, and when that calculates, it gives us a list of period numbers. Next, in D9, let's calculate the interest payment for each month. Now, I just want you to be aware that because we're looking at the process rather than the individual functions, we're not going to go through each function in detail. But the function we're going to use is the IPMT function. For the first argument of rate, we want to use cell C5 divided by 12 to get our monthly interest rate. For the second argument of per, which is the period number, we want the value from our sequence function. Therefore, I can select B9 and then enter hash to select the entire spill range. Next, we have the n per argument. This is the total number of periods, and we can find that in cell C4. Finally, we have PV, which is the present value. And we want this to be the minus loan amount in cell C3. That now calculates the interest due on each month. And we see that over time, the amount of interest reduces because we are making payments against that loan. Now in E9, let's calculate how much those monthly payments are. For this, we're going to use the PMT function. It has similar arguments to the previous function we looked at. Therefore, rate is going to be C5 divided by 12. N per is going to be C4. And PV is going to be the loan amount in C3. Rather than an array, this calculates a single value. But we want this to be an array. To achieve that, we're going to wrap the sequence function around this. At the start, I will add sequence opening bracket. For the rows argument, we want the value in C4. Then we want a single column. The start value will be the result of the PMT function. Then we have our final argument of step, and we want to step by zero. So this creates a sequence of numbers starting at the result of the PMT function and steps by zero each time, which means it creates an array of repeating numbers. Now let's move on to the closing balance. In F9, I'll type equals scan opening bracket. For the initial value, we want the loan amount in C3. For the array argument, we want to add 
our interest and our payment. Therefore, we're going to select D9, enter a hash, then add that to E9 hash. That will give us the net movement. Finally, we come to the function argument and we want to perform a sum function on all of these values. That creates a running total showing the closing balance at the end of each period and finishing with the loan being fully repaid. So we just need to calculate the opening balance. To do that in cell C9, I'll enter equals VStack opening bracket. We're going to start with the loan amount in C3 and below that we want to stack the result of the scan function. So that's F9 hash. The result of this calculation will contain more items than all of our other columns. We need to remove the last row. To achieve that, we're going to add the drop function at the start. Then we can come to the end and enter minus one to drop the last row. And that now calculates our opening balance. Let's also add a total row to show the total interest and total payments. In B21, I'll enter equals H stack open bracket. In double quotes, I'll enter the word total. Then for the next argument, we just want an empty text string. For the interest column, we want to sum D9, so that's our interest calculation, and hash to get the entire spill range. For the payment column, we want the same. We want the sum, but this time of E9, and we want hash to get the spill range. To make sure that all of our arrays have the same columns, we're going to enter an empty text string as our final argument. We can then close the H stack function and that gives us a total row. The values for our report are now complete. So let's bold our total row by pressing Control B and let's add a top border with Alt H B P. Unfortunately, this is not fully dynamic. If we change the number of periods to eight, we get a space between the last row and the total row. If we change it to 16, we get the hash spill errors everywhere. So let's go and change this into a single formula so that it can be dynamic. We're going to start building our formula in cell H8. I'm going to type equals let open in bracket. Then I'll press Alt and Enter to create a new line. We're now going to add a variable for each of our three parameters. The first one will be called loan and we will use the value in C3. The next will be called months and we will use the value in C4. And the final parameter is rate and that is the value in C5. Now the last argument of let is the output value. At the moment, we just want a placeholder. So we will give this a dummy value of zero and that now returns that dummy value. That's our start point. Now let's add the individual calculations. I will copy the formula in cell B8. Then I'll come back to our let function and create a variable called title. Then I will paste that formula. Next, we're going to come to cell B9. We're going to copy that formula and then head back to our let function once again. We're going to add a variable called period, and we can then paste that formula. Rather than referencing C4, we're going to reference our months variable. Let's now do the same thing with interest. We will copy the formula from D9. We'll come back to our let function. We're going to create a variable called interest, and then we can paste the formula, and we want to repoint those cells. C5 becomes rate. B9 hash will become the result of the period variable. C4 becomes months. C3 becomes loan. Now let's repeat that for the payment. So we will go to cell D9. We will copy that, then come back to our let. We will create a new variable called payment. We will paste the formula. C4 becomes months. C5 becomes rate, C4 becomes months again, and then C3 becomes loan. Next, we have the closing balance. Again, we're going to copy that formula. We'll come back to let. We will create a variable called closing, and we can then paste that formula. 
C3 will become loan, D9 hash will become our interest variable, and E9 hash will become our payment variable. Now let's do the same thing for the opening. So we're going to copy that, come back to our let, we're going to call our variable opening. C3 will become loan and F9 hash will become closing. Finally, we want to do the same for our total. So we're going to copy that formula. We'll come back to our let, create a variable called total. Instead of referencing D9 hash, we want to reference the interest variable. And instead of E9 hash, we want to reference the payment variable. We now have the individual calculations that we need. So let's bring them together into a single result. Instead of returning zero, let's build that result. To do that, we're going to use the H stack function and we're going to stack the period, then the opening, then the interest, then the payment, and then the closing. Next, we want to add the title at the top and the total at the bottom. So at the start of this line, we're going to add a V stack and we want to stack the title. Then after that, we will have our H stack. And finally, we want to stack the total. When we calculate that, boom, look at that. We now have a single formula. Let's now copy that formula. We can then select and clear all of the previous cells and then we can paste that formula into cell B8. Everything looks great until we change the number of periods. So let's change that to 16. All of the calculations update, but the formatting is in the wrong place. So let's fix that. Let's clear all of that previous formatting. Then we want to select a range which will be bigger than our report will occupy. Then we can go to conditional formatting and select new rule. And we want our rule to be based on a formula. The formula that we want to apply is equals dollar B8. So this means it will check down each of the values in column B and we want to check where it equals the word total. If it does equal total, we're going to format that cell so that the text is bold and it has a top border. We can then click OK until we get back to Excel. Our formatting is now in the right place. If we have eight periods, everything updates. If we have 12 periods, everything updates. And that's it. We've created an entire report from a single formula. If any of the parameters change, everything updates accordingly. Now, if you want to master Excel, then check out our Excel Academy over at excelofthegrid.com. It's got everything you need to save huge amounts of time with Excel. And once you've done that, why not check out that video next? I think it's another one you'll really enjoy. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.